Good evening, Callum McCann. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you. In presenting American Mother, the book you wrote with Diane Foley, published in French by Les Editions Bellefonds, thanks to the translation of Clément Baud, you wrote on your website. This book is not mine, nor is it just Diane's. It's a book about journalists and storytellers and how they join the world together. It's also a book about a mother's uncompromising love and not just one mother, but a nation or nations of them. How did you approach writing the story of Diane and James Foley and stepping into nonfiction with and for them? Mm. Well, it's my first nonfiction book, um, so in a way, uh, it was a new sort of um, adventure. Although I do think that um, you know you got to treat your uh, nonfiction the same way that you treat your fiction, and uh, you treat your characters the way you treat people who are living in the real world and um, you try to tell the story as powerfully and, and, and as truthfully uh, as you possibly can. Um, for me it was a story that I wanted to hold on to and, and be very careful with because it's a powerful story, it's about a mother um, who has lost her son in horrible circumstances uh, and then seven years after he's killed she decides to go and sit down with her son's killer and she spends three days in total with him um, but it's not just about that particular moment it's about her whole life and how she changed the whole landscape of uh, how we think about hostages, how we think about wrongfully detained people. It's also a story about mothers and, and their power and, 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 and women uh, who are prepared to take on the world even when they get ignored. Because Diane was sort of of a certain age um, and she would go into the corridors of power and she said, well, people look beyond her, people look past her. And she said, no, no, look me in the eyes. Um, I have something to tell you. Uh, you know, my son was taken and, and we have to change the way we think about um, uh, the way hostages are treated and uh, the way we um, sort of uh, negotiate for them. In American Mother, you wrote about truth. La vérité est kaleidoscopique. Elle comporte de nombreux miroirs et peut être observée sous plusieurs angles. La meilleure vérité, la vérité la plus vraie, est toujours cumulative, plurielle. At La Maison de la Poésie de Paris, earlier this year, you said, truth are diseased with narrow certainty. Mm. How do you translate and prevent this through writing? Well, I think writing is one of the few places where you can get at the complicated kaleidoscopic truth. Uh, you can look at the truth from several different angles, because there's no such thing as one single truth. Um, there's so much more than one truth and even the truth on the opposite side is sometimes true as well and we have to understand that um, and we have to take the collective truth and, and weigh it up in our hands and, 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 and to, to find out uh, where it you know where the honesty is as well as the truth uh, both of these things um, coming together and I think uh, writing has a, a, has a powerful function in that because um, writing shouldn't tell you what to think you know, it's boring. I'm so bored of being told uh, what to think by, you know, governments, by advertisers, by corporations, even sometimes by artists. But in general, artists try not to tell you what to think, but they instead they allow you to think. So they present you this universe uh, into which you can walk and you make up your own mind about it. That to me is a complicated and powerful truth in itself. As part of this kaleidoscopic truth, there are many worlds that encounter each other in American Mother through words that have a different weight, significance, depending on the sphere they are attached to. The legal sphere, the human, intimate, political. We sense this as readers immediately as you take us to the encounter of Diane Foley with Alexander Coty after he pleaded guilty to all charges, including torturing and killing his son, mm -hmm. her son, sorry. Why was it important for you to make it the starting point of the book? Uh, I didn't know. You never really know what the starting point of any book is um, until you hit the actual moment and then you think, ah, oh, this is it, this is the container. Uh, Samuel Beckett says that it's the job of the artist to find a form that accommodates the mess. Um, and so you have to find a box 
into which to put this story. You have to find a glass into which to put this story. You have to find a globe. I mean, any, any number of structures work, but you have to find the right structure for the story. And it was when I walked into that room in the, uh, in the courthouse in Virginia, um, which was full of people. There was FBI and CIA and prosecutors and defense and all sorts of court clerks, big echoing room. Uh, and there was a man in the corner. I walked in with Diane Foley. Uh, and she sat down in front of her son's killer. He's got shackles on his ankles. He's got his jumpsuit, prison jumpsuit on. And she says, hello, Alexander. It's nice to meet you. And I knew in that moment, okay, this is where it begins. Yeah, I didn't know, quite know where it was going to end. And it ends in a really spectacular human moment as well. But, um, you know, you find these things um, as, as you go along. D'après les scientifiques, le monde est maintenu par des atomes, et c'est bien sûr le cas, mais il est aussi maintenu par des histoires. According to scientists, the world is maintained by atoms, and is, it is of course the case, but it is also held by stories. Yeah. That's what you write in American Mother. The, sto the story of Diane Foley seems to be an active force in maintaining the world together in that sense, but storytelling also brings you and James Foley together how did it impact your work for American Mother? Um, oh, isn't that nice? We're hearing church bells. Yes. That's so nice. Um, it's almost like it's, uh, it's telling us something because um, the, the, I mean, this, the world is held together, as we know, by molecules. This is held together by molecules. This, this is held together by molecules, atoms. Uh, and they're always moving and touching and shaping each other and, you know, dying and moving on. Um, stories too. Stories are moving and shaping and, 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 and they're really, um, for me, they're the living part of um, our, uh, our, our landscape. It's how we meet one another. Um, and we touch each other in extraordinary ways uh, through our stories. And that's why they're important. That's why literature is important. That's why libraries are important. That's why places like Village LA is important because we get these conversations to come together. We recognize each other through stories. Uh, you know, it's through the lives of other people uh, that we actually truly become ourselves. Um, and this is, uh, you know, particularly important uh, for young people now because we've gone through an epidemic of loneliness and isolation, um, especially when you think of like, uh, you know, people who've gone through COVID, uh, teenagers, they're wondering what sort of world is this? So they can approach one another and find one another through the act and the art of storytelling. American Mother was first published in French and in France before being released in other countries in its original language, in English. And it is very surprising. How have you perceived this particular release story of the book? I was so happy. I like France. <laughs> I like French readers. I think French readers engage very seriously uh, with books and writers. And they also engage very seriously with the art of literature. Um, I mean, I come from Ireland where the same sort of thing happens, but I find it even more powerfully uh, here. Um, and so we had a little bit of lead time, we were able to get a translation, and I thought, let's publish it first in France. And, and also, what's interesting is that France really cares about the hostage situation. And they care about their hostages much more than, the, the, well, not, a, not more than Americans, but more than the American government has done, more than the British government has done. And one of the things about Diane Foley was that she was not even allowed to like, raise her own ransom for her son, whereas the French government has always paid uh, for their, 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 their hostages. And that's the right way to do it. Um, and it's not like, uh, you know, uh, going, going to make more. There's, there, there, there's a misconception that paying for, 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 for hostages will just cause more and more of it to happen. No. I mean, the French people got free. The ones who died were the Americans and the British. And Jim Foley died. And Diane recognized this. Diane Foley uh, said, this has got to stop. We've got to change the way we think about this. We, can, we don't have to kowtow to people, but we have to learn how to understand and we have to learn how to negotiate. And that's what she did when she sat down at that table. She sort of did the, 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 the most unlikely thing. She sat down at the table, she looked across at her son's killer, and she had already forgiven him, and she just wanted him to know what 
he had taken from the world. And it was a really powerful, powerful moment. Diane Foley told the BBC, if I hate them, they have won. Mm. They will continue to hold me captive because I am not willing to be different to the way that they were to my loved one. We have to pray for the courage to be the opposite. Tonight, at La Villa Gillet, you are invited with Olesia Kromitschuk to open the 2024 Literature Life Festival on the theme Écrire pour comprendre, writing to understand. What did the process of writing this story brought to you in that aspect? Mm. I mean, I think every story increases your, your soul, it increases your heart, your brain, uh, your engagement with the world. But this one in particular was, was, was very profound um, because Diane um, has a spectacular intuition uh, about people and um, you know and she does things differently than, than, than other people but the thing that she does is the right thing what she talks about she talks about moral courage she talks about her son having moral courage yes you can have physical courage but the really profound thing to have is to have uh, moral courage and not to you know turn justice into revenge she allowed justice to become something revelatory rather than revengeful and um, so it's been a, been a sort of honor to, 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 to learn that but also to know that that what happens in the world of, uh, of literature and this is why we write books and poems and plays and journalistic articles and uh, why we do podcasts and why we talk to one another uh, because there is some form of hope there is an engagement that we must do uh, and we're not completely alone what literary legacy do you feel is supporting you when you write books and what legacy in turn you wish to give to the world through your books? Uh, the legacy I would want to give to the world um, is the legacy that I've been given, mm -hmm. which is just the, the, the spectacular the, like, like, uh, beauty of stories and storytelling down through the years, whether you go back to, you know, my childhood when my father was writing stories or when you go back to uh, you know other heroes of mine like Toni Morrison or all the way back to you know James Joyce or all the way back to Shakespeare that whole legacy that we get because we get our voice from the voices of others this is the thing um, and you know we don't come out fully formed fully sprung like you know and, and, and able to write we, we we can only write and think things because others have thought them um, before and then maybe something new uh, comes out of all of this. So the legacy is uh, the legacy that you appreciate and the legacy that you hope to continue to give to others. Finally, what book, whose voice would you like to invite us to read or listen to tonight? Tonight, mm -hmm. of all books that I could choose yes. um, anywhere, I mean, um, I don't know, all books. I mean, I, I could say Ulysses because it is my favorite book. Um, and I'm wondering about like um, the book that's particularly pertinent uh, to um, this evening. But I don't know, I, I would say the book that's in your heart, the book that's in your head, maybe even the book that's by your bedside, um, maybe even all books. Um, and that's not a cop-out answer, I hope. Uh, but um, uh, yeah. So it's important that we um, continue to read and talk to one another and understand one another through the art of literature. Maybe look at the books that are around you and exactly. take one. Exactly. Thank you very much, Colin McKenna. Thank you so much.